welcome to Ms. G's uh, backyard. So things are a little bit different today. All right, we are going to be creating projects uh, in celebration of Earth Day. So I have decided to move my art class out this week into the backyard. All right, take it out into nature. And what we're gonna be doing today is we're going to be using supplies and materials from nature to help us create our piece. Now we're going to be creating these pieces based off of the land artist, Andy Goldsworthy. So what I'm gonna need for you guys to do is go ahead and see what you have in your uh, backyard, front yard, maybe at the park down the street. Miss G went to her park down the street earlier and grab some different things like leaves, sticks, flowers, um, maybe you find some pine cones, some rocks, uh, anything that you can find, okay? Go ahead, grab it, put it maybe into a nice little bin, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna be creating our very own Andy Goldsworthy inspired radial symmetry land art pieces. Let's get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to start by placing one object down. So you can see here, I found this uh, little thing of moss that was put together, all right? So I'm gonna place that right in the center here. Now, we're going to be building these uh, via radial design, okay? Radial design meaning that we are going to be building a giant circle, okay? That keeps going and anything that you put here is gonna reflect over this way, okay? So you're gonna reflect, or you're gonna have your stuff up here, it's gonna reflect this way, but also you still want this side to reflect this side. So you wanna pretty much make it that no matter which way you cut it, it's all the same. So if I were to go diagonal, this side would match this side. If I went this way, this side matches this side, okay? So we're pretty much gonna keep our design going uh, all the way around, keeping it the same. All right, so first piece that I'm starting off with, this is the center. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with my little piece of moss. Now, what I think I'm gonna go ahead and do after that is I found these little, all right, pebbles. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to place these around. Okay, so I'm gonna put one at the top, bottom, side, side. Let's put here, here, and here and here. All right, great. So you guys can see again, I made sure that I'm doing my radial symmetry. All right, so no matter which way you cut it, it's the same. All right, cool. So I went ahead and I built that part out there. Now I found these really cool pine cones at the park. All right, so I have about four here. So what I think I'm gonna do, I got like uh, some different sizes. So I think I'm going to put my small ones on the side here, okay? And then I'm going to put a large one up here at the top and a large one here down at the bottom, okay? Something kind of like that. Nice. All right. So I found as well these guys. Okay, I found these uh, when I was walking. And so I think I'm going to take, split them up into about twos. Now, you may not have these, and that is totally okay. I want you to use what you have. So, hmm, all right. What could I make from these? I'm thinking between maybe each of my pine cones, I'll put here and here. Get these a little bit closer. Cool. Maybe I'll put another one here. Oh, hi, Emilu. My dog's joining us today for our outside lesson. All right, cool. So, there, so I put two in between all right, each of my pine cones, and you can see, all right, I've sort of made them meet here at the center a little bit. I might take this one, this one broke a little bit, but why not, I'll attach them on kind of like this. So you can see they're meeting here at the center, and then they're getting a little bit larger as they go out. So that's an effect that we call tapering. So you can see here that these are tapering. So I have these little wood pieces which you guys want to know something pretty fun about these. These actually came from our Christmas tree. Um, my fiance and I, when we were cutting down our tree to create firewood, we had some that we cut into little circular pieces like this. So I decided, all right, I grabbed them from our, our little wood area. So I'm going to go ahead and I think in between each of my pine cones here that I did with these, I'm going to put one of the guy, these guys. 
All right, cool. So again, guys, we are working on doing radial design, okay, radial symmetry. So anything that I do, I wanna make sure that it's reflecting, okay? Whether it's up and down, side to side, or diagonal, okay? Make sure you keep that in mind. We are building these out from the center out, okay? Circular design. All right, let's see what else I can do. So while I was also on my walk, I found some of these beautiful purple flowers. I have to tell you, the tree that I walked by smelled so nice. It was oh gorgeous. Uh, these were some of the petals that were down on the ground. So I think what I'm gonna do for these, oops, some of my supplies just flew away a little bit, is I'm gonna put these on either side, okay, of my pine cone. So I'll put them here, here. So I'm taking two each and I'm putting them on each side like that. It's bringing a little bit of color, wouldn't you say? Some contrast from the neutral colors that I have from my other pieces. Now, we don't have a lot of flowers um, by our house. We don't actually have any flowers like in a garden. So you might have more. So you might have something that's maybe a little bit more uh, vibrant maybe has more color involved than Miss G's does. All right, cool, so I have those. Now I also found these while on my walk. Aren't these beautiful? I love this color. This is probably one of Miss G's like favorite colors. Nice little pink. So I think what I might do for these guys, what if I take them and I actually put them right in front of my wood, my tree stump. Okay, so I'm gonna put just in front like this Awesome. Okay, let's see what else I have here. Well, we have some of these rocks and these are all throughout, okay, our backyard and we have some in our front yard as well. So I decided to go pick some of those and I think what I'm gonna do for these guys, whoa, well, certainly I hope I don't drop them. I think I might put these mm, maybe up here. All right, maybe I'll do about two each. So let's see, two two, and they can just be up at the top, like that, two, 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 and two. Cool, nice. Hmm, let's see, what else does Miss G have in her yard? Well, I went to our front yard and I grabbed some peach, peach blah, blah, blah. I went to our front yard and I grabbed some pieces of mulch, okay? So let's see, maybe what I'll do is, cause I still have some space where these pine cones are. So maybe I'll start by doing one piece coming out from the center of each pine cone, something maybe like that. And I wanna give this a little bit more space. All right, so let's see, coming out from the center. Now maybe what I could do is, Come and add two on each side of that centerpiece that I just did. So come around this side, this side. So now I'm gonna have three. Okay, remember that one that's gonna line up with the center of your pine cone, but then also the ones that are on the each side of it. All right, cool. So something like that. Beautiful. Okay, now. Again, to create a little bit of contrast in our work, I went over to the tree that's in our backyard and I picked off some of our leaves. Here you can see these ones are nice and alive. While then I had some that were below the tree that you can tell that these ones are leaves that are dead and that have fallen, okay? So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the contrast of my leaves that are alive and my leaves that are dead. You can see the contrast based off the color. Uh, and I'm going to use these to, let's see, possibly come in between these pieces of the mulch that I just did. So why don't I come in and on the pieces of the mulch that are on the inside, I think I'm gonna place my green leaves. You can see I have um, some differences in my leaves here on with my scale, meaning with the size. So some pieces might be a little bit larger than others. Okay, so again, I'm taking these and I'm going in between my mulch. 
Nice. And I'm just gonna bring this piece a little closer so I can give some more room. Now with these uh, other leaves here, these ones that are dead, I think what I might do is come here on the outsides of the mulch and add them. So that'll help me fill in some of this space too that was created by my pine cones. Oops. And sometimes you may need to adjust as you're going. You guys can see I've been doing that a little bit. All right, cool. So I've got those leaves there. I gotta get some more in. Let's put this here. And this one on the outside. All right. Wow, look at this. I'm feeling pretty good about this piece. I could continue to add to it if I felt like, you know, all right, maybe I want to build up here a little bit more. Um, and actually, you know what? Now that I look at it, hmm. So I found a couple more things. I had these leaves, which are a little bit different from my other leaves that I was already using. These are actually ones that I picked up at the park. But then also I found this. Now this is actually from our uh, Christmas tree. My fiance and I, when we were cutting up our tree to use for firewood, we still had some of our branches. So I don't know, this is pretty interesting. Maybe I could go in and add that there. Maybe I'll try that. All right, so you can see I broke them up. So now they're in separate pieces. So I think what I might try is putting them in between each of my rocks here. All right, so I want you guys to do this when you're looking at your project, see if there's any areas where maybe you could fill in with a little bit more. So you guys saw that as I was going, I realized maybe there's a little bit more empty space. So I'm just gonna fill that part in right there. All right, now I still have these leaves. Maybe I can try something with them. Let's see. All right, so I think, I don't know. What do you think, Emmylou? Should I go ahead? Should I use some of these? I think I should. So I'm gonna take these leaves here and I think what I'm going to do, and it's okay, you can see I have a couple pieces right here that maybe the wind started to blow away. That's a little part of um, land art is that nature definitely can control sometimes where things go. All right, so I'm gonna put these there. Now I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these leaves and you can see here that I created the center, all right, with uh, part of my Christmas tree here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place a leaf on either side of it, just like how I sort of did um, with my mulch and my different types of leaves over here. So I'm gonna put one and two, something like that. I think I'll put up here. And lastly, one more spot to go. Remember, you can always move and adjust these as you go. <sighs> Fantastic, check that out. So we went ahead and we made sure that to continue on with doing our radial symmetry uh, and to keep things balanced, okay? It's really important to keep things balanced on each side. We made sure that whatever is repeating on this side repeats on this side, whatever repeats on this side repeats on this side, as well as what you have on here should reflect over here, okay? Remember, radial design, radial symmetry, create that balance. All right, friends, check it out. I can't wait to see what yours look like. What do you think, Emilou? How'd we do? How'd we do? You wanna be in our video? You wanna say hi? You're so cute. Oh my goodness, boys and girls. How do you feel now that you are total environmental artists? I hope you've enjoyed doing our Andy Goldsworthy inspired land art pieces and that you learned so much about different uh, radial design and symmetry. And I will see you guys next week for our online art class. Bye.